I welcome you to the most ignored house in astrology. <laughs> in astrology, we always discuss the 7th house and the 10th house and the ascendant, sometimes the 5th, 8th, 12th and of course the 6th house. But we forget to discuss one important house, which is the 4th house. The 4th house is... I, I make this video once every year to remind the audience... <laughs> How important this Kendra house is. Imagine the power of this house. Why is this house so powerful? Because the greatest of all benefics, which is Jupiter, gets exalted in Cancer, which is the original fourth sign. Now, what is Jupiter? Jupiter is the Karaka for, I don't know, half the chart. So, second house, fifth house, ninth house. Uh, 11th house and also the 7th house for ladies. So it's the card of so many. Some say it is also the card of the 10th house. So almost like, you know, 40, 40, 40, 50% of the chart, Jupiter is the Karaka, right? So therefore, the house where a planet finds its exaltation, you know, the sign, that house cannot be an ordinary house. That house is a very important house. Now, what does this mean? It means in the fourth house, if good, it will facilitate the other houses, which Jupiter represents, which is the second, the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, the tenth, and the eleventh. Oops. How many? <laughs> Six houses. So, a good fourth house will facilitate half the horoscope. Can you believe it? There is one one house is facilitating half of your entire energy, half of your entire life, half of everything that you have, half of everything that you represent, half of everything that you want. And yet we rarely discuss about this house. So the first thing that the fourth house represents, which is very, very, very crucial, is the fourth house shows how do you take things in life? How do you absorb things? The fourth house tells you... If something happens to you, how do you see it? What does this mean? It means, suppose something bad happens to you because of your own bad karma. Can you accept it? Or are you revengeful? Or are you hateful? Now, I'm not saying that if somebody does anything wrong to you, you don't seek justice. No. But do you harbor animosity, you know, hatred and poison in the heart? Because it's the fourth house. <laughs> or you can let go of it. Okay. That is seen from the fourth house. So if the fourth house is good, then you know that even if the world crushes, the world uh, crushes upon you, everything just comes on top of your head, you will still not harbor hatred because that's not your nature, right? And if you see Lord Ram, he's also Cancer Ascendant, right? Very, very, very important Ascendant. Uh, no hatred against anybody. So a person with a good fourth house will be able to forgive somebody. They may not uh, forget that or they may not accept that person back into their life, but they will be able to forgive. So this is a great lesson of the fourth house, right? If you cannot forgive, then um, you, you are in trouble. <laughs> the other person may or may not be in trouble, but if you can't forgive, you will definitely be in trouble, all right? So the fourth house... <laughs> is also responsible uh, this is point number two uh, it's also responsible for any kind of uh, psychological diseases and disorders that you might have you know so like for example um AD, AD, adhd or you know there's another i think add and then narcissistic personality disorder you know sociopath psychopath so all the mental craziness of this world comes from one house see why uh, like for example let's talk of npd narcissistic personality disorder it is a it is a result of either over parenting or under parenting or sometimes a combination of both in the childhood right so for example uh, duryodhana is a classic narcissist why because he was like over parented you know over parented means you know over pampering uh, not punishing you when you are doing wrong things in the childhood and then the person feels very entitled right and um, the other extreme is if you are under parented, okay, so you are always criticized, you are always judged, you are always abused, insulted. So then you sometimes want to do the same to others, right? So therefore, this 
these things happen in the childhood. Now, which house shows your childhood? The second house. So there you go again. The second house, fifth house, children, right? Ninth house, father. Fourth house, mother. Eleventh house, your society and your circle. So now are you able to see how the fourth house is governing all of these areas, right? So very, very, very important. And then number three, the fourth house shows your your comfort in life, your security, basically. Now, you may think, oh, yeah, yeah, we know, you know, it's the house of the home uh, or the literally the house that we are in. It shows real estate and all this. But I'm not talking of superficial external things. No, I'm talking of deep inner security. So, for example, if the fourth house <clears throat> is good, then you will feel very stable and secure and safe within. If not, you will always feel insecure, irrespective of how much wealth you have in your chart, in your life, you know, how much luck, how many luxuries you have, you will always feel very, you'll always feel very low, dry, miserable. You will you will feel very empty inside. But a good fourth house can reward you with all of these securities. Okay. Externally also, uh, but for externals, uh, you have to see the 11th house, 10th house, 6th house, you know, because that is where the rental income comes in and money comes in. But nonetheless, uh, if the fourth house is not good, you, you don't like secure people. W what does this mean? You It means whenever you see that somebody is having something which you don't have, that makes you very uncomfortable. So you have, you know, envy, hatred, jealousy and all this. And you're very political and uh, you like to play games basically, okay? And last but not the least, the fourth house shows your spiritual commitments. Why? Because it's the house of education and the deeper you are aware of something, the deeper you are convinced about something, it shows your conviction, right? And see, that is why the fifth house is the second from the uh, fourth house. The fourth house is knowledge. It's education about mundane or spiritual, whatever. So the more you have knowledge, the more you are convinced, you know, the more you are fixed, then what happens? You get enthusiasm, which is the fifth house, right? Fifth house is the house of enthusiasm. Why you get up? It's your vision. So if you don't have knowledge, what kind of a vision will you have? So suppose, for example, you want to learn astrology, you want to become a big astrologer, you know, offline, online, but you have no knowledge. Then how will you get a vision to become a great astrologer? Either externally or, you know, internally in your circles, you are a very good astrologer. So either ways. So the fourth house will tell you how much substance a person has. The fourth house will tell you who the person is inside when nobody is watching you. And this is exactly what the Navamsha also does. If you see the Navamsha is also the chart which tells what you are, who you are when you are all alone by yourself and nobody is watching you. And, and guess what is the Navamsha? Navamsha is like zooming in the ninth house and who is the Karaka for the ninth house and the original ninth lord, Surya, but also Jupiter, right? And he gets exalted here. So the fourth house and the Navamsha have very similar characteristics, okay? So fourth house also shows your purity. You know, this is also number five, you know, how much, um, or it comes in the same, you know, like um, it shows who you are basically. So how much pure are you? How much, what's the purity of your thoughts, okay? How pure are your intentions? So sometimes you will find people, they will say, if they do something wrong, they will always say that, oh, but my intentions were not wrong. So you can't punish me. <laughs> but if they say that, maybe you can believe them for a while. If their fourth house is good, so then it seriously means they have good intentions for themselves and for everybody. But they are not able to do some bad dasha, you know, they end up maybe not behaving in the best way. But the other way around, if somebody is very nice to you and somebody uh, behaves in a way that they are your favorite people and they have not the best fourth house, so that means they are pretending, all right? They're pretending till the time they can get what they want from you and they can suck out all the benefits from you. They can abuse you they can exploit you and then they will discard you okay so that's what is the fourth house and 
of course it shows uh, spiritual elevation you know like bhakti you know, like for example where you connect to god at an emotional level and of course mother and all this you know which you are already aware so therefore the fourth house is very 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 important it can show higher spiritual uh, state of consciousness you know like bhakti yoga as krishna says in the gita na bhakti mayam karam param kritva so that bhakti yoga is the topmost among all the yoga system there is nothing beyond because finally it is absorption in god and that is why do not forget jupiter gets exalted in the sign of cancer which is also the sign of bhakti basically all right thank you so much if you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and if you are new then please subscribe share this video with somebody who needs to hear this about the fourth house and for consultations please go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in the fourth house <laughs> all right take care namaste